One of the best things about making videos here on YouTube is the ability to discuss deep philosophical issues with a real community of sincere, like-minded people. I love engaging with you guys and reading your critical feedback because it's a great way to dig out errors in my understanding and correct them for future reference. But if there's one thing that really gets under my skin, it's when people openly tout their credentials as expert philosophical thinkers only to follow through with the most asinine rebuttals you can imagine. For example, consider YouTuber Philosophy Lines, who has the following to say about the Philosophical Failures series and New Atheism in general. The errors he makes in this series are illustrative of the tendency within New Atheism to rely on popular writers such as Dawkins, Harris, or Michael Shermer, rather than serious philosophers such as Plantinga, Mackey, Oppie, and Smith. Alright, so obviously Mr. Philosophy Lines here seems to fancy himself quite the sophisticated intellectual philosopher. And hey, that's fine if you want to think that, but seriously buddy, if you're going to puff yourself up to that kind of academic level, then you'd better have some real hard-hitting criticism. Show us what you got, champ. In his video, Philosophical Failures of Christian Apologetics Part 3, Anti-Citizen X shows that he does not understand the conception of God outlined by modern theists such as Swinburne, Craig or Plantinga. I'll quote Swinburne from The Existence of God. Quote, God is omnipotent, able to do whatever is logically possible. End quote. Okay, so it appears that Philosophy Lines takes issue with my stated definition for omnipotence as the unlimited capacity to do anything. Why? Because apparently that's not the definition used by modern theists, as if the entirety of Christianity is completely monolithic with respect to the idea of God's omnipotence, right? Of course, this is a straw man of the theist, who does not claim that omnipotence is the ability to do everything, including the logically impossible. It's logically impossible to move an immovable object, so God's inability to do so does not violate his omnipotence, correctly defined as the ability to do anything logically possible. Thus, anti-Citizen X's attempt to show that omnipotence is logically incoherent, and therefore God cannot exist, fails. And that's it. That's pretty much the sum total of his entire response. My stated definition is not his preferred definition, so therefore I'm an incompetent boob who should just get off the internet. Thank goodness we have philosophy lines to set me straight. Which brings us to our first installment of a new video series called Where Do I Even Begin? Wherein I'm just going to angrily vent at self-important assholes who think that they're God's gift to philosophy. Because this response is so completely asinine that I almost don't even know where to begin. Like, for starters, when it comes to an idea like omnipotence, there really is no such thing as a correct definition. There are only good definitions and bad definitions. For example, if you take a look at the Wikipedia entry on omnipotence, you'll find at least a half dozen variations for that word right there, plus who knows how many more scattered throughout the literature. And as it just so happens, absolutism is a perfectly valid conception that many Christian philosophers and lay people alike have historically used. So if my offered definition for that word happens to be different from your definition, then good for you, Phil! All it means is that whatever arguments I'm about to offer no longer apply to you, now do they? So what's your problem? That still does not absolve you from the fact that other people definitely have held to my definition and so deserve to be addressed. And, as we all know, absolute omnipotence is a definitely bad conception of God because it falls victim to the paradox of the stone. The idea that if God can do anything, then let's see God create a rock so heavy that even God himself cannot lift it. The whole point of the paradox is to simply show that certain definitions for God are obviously not logically tenable. Therefore, if the theists are not careful with their definitions, then I can axiomatically disprove God's existence through the use of brute logical force. It's like you completely missed the forest for the trees. But even ignoring that, the one thing that really aggravates me about this response is that even if we do adopt the modern academic definition for omnipotence, it still doesn't actually resolve the paradox. It just changes the wording a little bit. And what's even more embarrassing is how trivially easy this is to prove. Just get out a piece of paper, write logical possibilities at the top, and start enumerating the list. 
Like for example, item 1, is it or is it not logically possible to make rocks? Well, sure, of course it is. There are no intrinsic contradictions to that claim, so therefore it goes on the list. Item 2, is it logically possible to lift rocks? Well, again, yes, put it on the list. Item number 3, is it logically possible to make a rock that has the distinct property of being unliftable by its own maker? Is that or is that not a logically possible thing to do? It absolutely kills me how many people seem to struggle with this simple question, despite the fact that I have personally performed this very action on myself just fine and so can you. Therefore, it axiomatically must be a logically possible thing for me to do. And if it's logically possible for me to do it, then it necessarily must be a logically possible thing that can be done. Therefore, it goes on the list. And if it goes on the list, then by definition, it has to qualify as a distinct thing God can do. It really is that simple. But of course, there's a problem. How can God lift any finite rock, yet still have the distinct capacity to create a finite rock that he cannot lift? It's a contradiction, isn't it? The capacity to do all that is logically possible is apparently not a logically possible thing. So I'm really sorry if this sounds a little harsh for all those modern, serious philosophers out there, but the paradox is still there, you idiots. You haven't solved a damn thing. So really, Phil, whose philosophical ignorance is being exposed here? You obviously haven't thought this thing through because all you did was replace one paradox with another. I mean, for a guy who claims to only read serious philosophers, how is it that you've never once encountered Bertrand Russell? Because if you actually did your homework on this stuff, then you would know that the omnipotence paradox is really just a roundabout variation on Russell's paradox. Does the set of all sets which do not contain themselves contain itself? There is no logically decidable answer to this question, and there are well understood explanations for why this is the case. You see, the reason why omnipotence is such a bad idea is because it's grounded on a principle known as unrestricted comprehension, basically a kind of you-name-it-then-God-can-do-it mentality. And it just so happens to be a logical and mathematical theorem that any theory which contains the slightest shred of unrestricted comprehension must also necessarily be inconsistent. So when Christians try to wiggle out of the omnipotence paradox by claiming that God can only do what is logically possible, they still haven't solved the fundamental problem. It still contains elements of unrestricted comprehension, and all I have to do to break it is simply feed it back onto itself. Notice how this is exactly what the paradox of the stone accomplishes by simply asking, what happens when God pits himself against himself? It's a perfectly valid question in any other context, so why is it so hard for a deity? The reason is obviously because God himself is not rigorously defined. He literally cannot do anything that involves himself without invoking a paradox. Like, for example, let's suppose that God has infinite strength. Okay, then what happens if he simply pushes his left arm against his right arm in a form of one-man arm wrestle? Paradox, that's what happens. Infinity minus infinity is not a logically viable thing. Or better yet, maybe you say that omnipotent beings cannot fail at any task. Well, okay, so what happens when God simply plays himself at a game of chess? By definition, any outcome necessarily constitutes a logical failure at checkmating himself. We may therefore conclude with perfect logical certainty that God cannot exist simply because the properties associated with that word are not internally consistent. Now if that weren't bad enough, it actually turns out we can even apply the same principle to other alleged properties of God and arrive at the exact same style of paradoxes. For example, consider the idea of God's omniscience, which is commonly defined as the capacity to know all that there is to know. Or maybe you define it as perfect knowledge of all truths. Well, again, we have yet another form of naive universal set grounded on unrestricted comprehension. So ask yourself, what can God know that involves himself? 
Strangely enough, this is exactly how we arrive at Gödel's famous incompleteness theorems, that for any axiomatic system of propositional logic capable of doing basic arithmetic, there necessarily exist true propositions within that system that cannot be proven. The reason is again due to that same implicit vulnerability to self-referential negation. For example, one well-known application of this principle is called the halting problem from computer science. Given some computer program with known input arguments, can God tell me whether or not it will halt when I run it? Notice how this is a perfectly simple question with a guaranteed outcome that physically has to occur. Yet, as odd as it may sound, the answer to this question is actually no. Even if we have complete access to the source code itself, there still exist simple computer programs whose termination properties cannot be predicted in advance. All you have to do is use God's prediction as the input argument for the program, and then simply tell the computer to do the opposite. Therefore, by definition, the outcome will always be not God's prediction, meaning that whatever God predicts is necessarily going to be wrong. So it doesn't matter how smart you think God is, there actually exist true propositions about the world that cannot be known because the very act of knowing them is what makes them false. So in conclusion, if you're going to tout your amazing academic credentials as a serious philosopher, then the least you could do is offer an argument that wasn't already decisively debunked nearly a hundred years ago. Unrestricted, naive universal set definitions are bad because they always blow up when exposed to self-referential feedback. Any attempt to define God in such a capacity is therefore logically guaranteed to contain paradoxes. So, dear Mr. Philosophy Lines, instead of reading books by philosophical hacks like Planning a Craig and Swinburne, perhaps you should try reading a little bit more Russell, Girdle, and Turing. Thank you for watching.